Hey guys, it's Doug Giles again, and welcome back to Creative Restorations. As you can see from the picture behind me, this is part two of the outdoor pool table. Now, I will tell you, this pool table is giving me fits, okay? This was initially supposed to be a two-part video, uh, but it looks as though this is actually going to turn into a four-part video, and I'm hoping that uh, between what I have planned for part three will cure every problem that this table has and part four will be the final installation of the table. So let's get into... Uh, by the way, I found out this pool table sells between twenty and $22,000 for this outdoor pool table. I know it's uh, another pool table technician commented on one of my videos uh, on the first video. And he said that, uh, you know, he's glad that someone else is actually bringing up the issues that these tables have. So, yeah, it's a very expensive pool table. And, you know, I got to say, if I had put out twenty to twenty two thousand dollars on an outdoor pool table, it had better be right and this one isn't and from what i understand it's all of them um you can look in the comments i will leave the link down below for the part one of this and if you're curious about what brand it is i'll leave you know look through the comments i'll actually pin that comment and you guys can see what this table is so without further ado let's get into part two all right, so we've actually gone around the entire table already. In part one, we went in and we, we picked up the rails because we saw that there was actually a problem with the rails themselves. So we got back to the table and we went ahead and took the cloth off, finished taking the pockets off. And, uh, you know, as with any table out there, the you know one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and start removing all of the staples uh, every staple I can find, uh, I really want it out of there because I don't want to take a chance on, well, cutting my hand open when, you know, when we're going to do the table itself, I don't want to cut, slice my hand open on, especially on a rusty staple on an outdoor table, especially. So this is the first thing I do, get the cloth off, rip it off, cut it and rip it off and then remove every last one of these staples. So once we've got that, uh, just like any other table, we put all of our trash in the center, fold it up, and get rid of the old cloth. Now once we've done that, we go around and we take all the bolts out, holding the slates on, and these are actually bolts and not screws. Um, you know, because the, the problem that this table has is that it needs to be re-leveled. The frame itself is, is way out of whack. Now this one didn't have any markings on it. So David's drawing an arch across all three slates. That way we know the correct orientation. And if you see, he just wrote street on there so that we know which side, you know, the, the, we know the exact orientation of everything. So we go ahead and we take all three of the slates off. Set them off to the side. And if you notice, you see the two pieces of plywood that are directly underneath the slate? Well, we'll address that in just a minute. So we'll take all three of them off. And this is unframed slate. Now the reason that they put the plywood underneath was nothing more than to give us something to staple to. Um, when you have unframed slate, typically what you would have to do is glue down that slate. Well, in this case, we had unframed slate, so what the manufacturer did is they put two pieces of plywood underneath. And as you just saw, when we went to move that last piece of slate, the plywood itself 
shifted. So the, the plywood is not actually attached to the table. It's just floating. And that's a serious, serious problem. So we didn't quite realize what, you know, what we were going to have to do. We were still thinking that we could just go in and, you know, level out the frame, put the slates back on and level out the slates. So David's going in to mark our, our individual pieces of, of plywood. And then we're going to go in and continue and get all of the rest of the staples out so that we're dealing with good, clean plywood there. And as you can see, there is absolutely nothing holding the frame of the table to the legs. So the frame just sets on top of the legs and then that plywood just sets right on top of the frame and it just kind of haphazardly got bolted together in those slots right there. Why this table would cost $20,000 is beyond me. So we're going to go in and we're going to attempt to level the frame at this point. And whoever installed this table to begin with, you can see the little blocks of wood on the left hand side there right above the leg in between the leg and the frame. You see the blocks of wood. So they kind of got it uh, leveled out to begin with, but they just didn't bring it the rest of the way. And it's still that end of the table, that same end of the table is still low. So we're going back in and, and again, I use my floor samples, my Home Depot floor samples, because they're good and stable. They don't rot away or anything like that. And we're bringing up that end of the table to, to get it level. And I don't know if you just saw it or not, but the frame itself is slightly racked. When we went to put the uh, the last little bit of shims in there, the one side we had to come up. Now, I've highlighted right there, those corners where the bolts go in, if you see the rust right there on the corners, that's rust from where the rail bolt was setting right against there. We actually... The last guy just kind of had the rail bolts pushed in there because he couldn't make it past that bracket. So what we're doing is we're going in and clipping off the ends, just the corner of each one of the brackets so that we have clearance for our rail bolts. And it's really a shame that on a brand spanking, well, on this table, on any table, that any technician should have to go in and uh, make major, major adjustments to a table just to make the rail bolts fit. To make any part fit, for that matter. So David's clipped off the two head the two ends at the head of the table. We're going in now and catching the, uh, the two at the foot end of the table. And really it's just get it cut most of the way through and use a, uh, use a crescent wrench and bend it off and then come back and, and clean it up with the grinder again. And as you can see, we're putting the plywood back on and again, the plywood floats on top of the frame, which floats on top of the legs. So nothing is really bolted down here. Now, it is very heavy and I doubt it would go anywhere, but still it should be secured. So I'm going back in now and I'm checking to see where my high end is and I'm going to level out the frame of uh, the uh, slates. And here's the problem right here. 
We've got the plywood underneath, and if we try to put the wedges between the frame and the plywood, it raises both pieces of slate, which is a problem. I can't raise them independently. So I go back in, and if I put the wedges in between the slate and the plywood, the plywood bends down, and the slate doesn't go up. So that's where we are with this table. Well, the fix, as you're going to see in part three of this monstrosity of a table, the fix is actually to go in. We're going to remove the plywood that is underneath the slate, in between the slate and the frame, and we are going to permanently attach slate frames, real, true slate frames. What that'll do is that'll allow us to independently raise each and every slate and it will give us a place that we can uh, attach our cloth to. Again, this is the correct fix and this is the way that it should have been done from the factory. Now, in part three, you'll see we'll go back in, we'll, we'll put the frames on the slate um, and there is another issue with the rail for the table. The contractor that was making the the underneath part of the rail, the uh, the rail itself, well, the specifications on the rail were not quite right. That one rail was raised up about a quarter of an inch higher than the other five rails. The nose height of the rubber ended up being about a quarter of an inch higher than all of the other rubber. Uh, and it also stuck out about... Uh, about three sixteenths of an inch stuck out further. The nose was out into the play field about three sixteenths of an inch more than all of the rest of the, the uh, rails. So the contractor had to go back in now and remake that part for underneath the rail. And in part three, we'll go ahead and we'll reattach that, <sighs> reattach the rubber on it, make our frames, and hopefully... This fixes everything, and then part four will come back, and we should be able to uh, just finish up the table, and the customer should be good and happy with it by then. This has been a long project, and quite frankly, if, if my customer, and I let my customer know to begin with that I, I despise working on outdoor pool tables, and had he not been such a nice guy and and so understanding and everything, especially with me going through COVID and all like that. But had it been any other customer, I would not have done this job. This, this is, and I've said this to other customers before that there are some jobs that I will decline. Um, not because I can't do the work, but because there are some jobs that I, I just, I'll tell them this, the, it's a, just a can of worms that I don't particularly care to open up. Um, especially when you're having to have to go back behind manufacturers and fix engineering blunders like this. So anyway, next video, uh, I am actually working on the editing of that video as well. And while I'm in the process of uploading this one, got a treat for you. This is a, this is going to be a twofold video. Next video, I should get it uploaded either later on today or tomorrow. It's going to be a two part or a two fold video. Um, it's a pool table install that I did for the NBA's Wesley Johnson, um, who happens to be my boss, my, my wife's boss. Um, so we installed a pool table for Mr. Johnson and um, got a little bit of an interview with him uh, at the end of that. Uh, but during the install, I've got the entire install. I'll probably cut it down a little bit for time's sake. Uh, but during the entire install, I'm also going to be doing a question and answer session where I take the qu uh, questions, select questions from the comments section of my videos and do a question and answer. So be looking forward to that. So we'll see you guys on the next video. As always, thank you for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Lots of comments. I love the comments. I love answering questions. So lots of questions down there. And if you like the videos, hit that thumbs up, man. I love those thumbs ups too. So we'll see you guys on the next video. Y'all take care.